Yeah, I was actually um, I was expecting um, a longer and a bigger fight. I think, seeing the the history that we have on this court, uh, we've played three sets. We I've been down to to win the championships uh, on that court, so I was definitely expecting one of those battles. Um, I was on top. I was uh, on top of my game. So um, yeah, good result. Very happy. Well, congratulations once again. We'll go to the uh, crowd and then we'll go to Gemma. Michael. Hi, Didi. Michael Lewis, ITFTennis.com. Congratulations on another Thank win. You. 12 consecutive slams now, third calendar slam. Um, what does that mean to you? And does this winning ever get old? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's one of those funny things where uh, you sort of get used to it. So like the special feeling or like I saw a Coco win yesterday. <laughs> uh, like the... the um, the first time will always be uh, the best one, and um, um, so yeah, like like the, the the special feeling or like the excitement from it, it it's a little bit less. But like I know at this point what I do for it every day. I know at this point that it's not just coincidence that I won just this one slam. I I can do it over 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 again. Um, so I think um, I appreciate it more these days. Um, that, so that's the difference. Brian? Brian Mone, Associated Press, congratulations. Thank you. Um, do any of these achievements stand out as a favorite of the rest as far as this many US Opens in a row or this many total Grand Slams in a row? Like, is any of them you're particularly the most proud of? Um, so I always like to say that I don't really keep track of the numbers. Um, I'd like to uh, really not worry about it too much, because then you th you're you gonna start to think about, oh, I wanna reach this or I wanna reach that. And uh, I really just wanna focus on my game and that's what I did today. So that's what I'm really proud of. Um, but I think just being this consistent is what I'm very proud of. Uh, being able to do it multiple times in the year. Um, yeah, I don't know, I, I don't even have a goal to never lose. Like that's a really strange goal to have that. Um, but because I think I have that goal, like I have, I, I think about myself, what do I have to do? Where can I find the key points? And I think because I focus on them too, so well, um, I managed to win. And um, yeah, the consistency I th is, I think, what I'm most proud of. In the back. Hi there, Amy Bird, usopen.org. Congratulations. I just have two questions. One is, how has your game changed uh, in the last year, if at all? My second question is, do you have any relationship with Esther Vergeer? Do you know her? Does she train you? Was she your you know, idol growing up or anything like that? Um, first question. How has your game changed? <laughs> um, so I think my serve has really been one of the things that I try to work on. And uh, throughout so many matches uh, this year, I've... I've showed that it has improved a lot. Um, unfortunately, there's still um, one or two matches, uh, probably a lot more, but uh, where it doesn't work quite yet. But then from sitting down in a wheelchair, it's very difficult shot. Like you have to hit up um, to hit it over the net. So it's never gonna be like one of those two meter tall guys where we're gonna hit down and we're gonna hit aces. So that's, the, that's part of wheelchair tennis. So you try to make the serve as as good as you can, and um, yeah, I think it's it's working, it's getting better, and I'm I'm sure it, like it's a it's an up and down kind of thing, but it's it's more up these days, so I'm happy about that. And then um, yeah, in terms of the there relationship, there was a second part. Yeah, sorry, I think she had there was a second part. Another question? Yeah, yeah, about Esther. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, about the relationship with Esther, we we work together. Uh, a couple of years ago where she was mentoring me in, in really the things besides the tennis court. So she wasn't training me uh, about tennis, but she was training me um, how I could maybe find sponsors or how can I manage f food, training, uh, not training, um, uh, media, for example, uh, like really the things that come b besides the tennis court. Um, she's, she's took on, she's taken on couple of other jobs where they've become really important and also I've grown uh, into the tennis player that I am now where 
the relationship has changed a bit. Like we're more equals now. Uh, she's doing other things, and I'm. I, I have my own career, so um, it's still a very good relationship. We see each other uh, often here. Hey, Gemma, go. Um, I was going to say, Dida, we talked Friday about you know you've been really happy with your serve this year, but then Friday you felt that there was a bit of a wobble. I mean, watching you, um, <laughs> there was there was there was plenty to love about your serve today. But I just wanted to know how you were feeling about it today. Yeah, um, I took a little bit of speed off. Um, also because I think sometimes you can hurt the opponent more with a higher percentage and um, more of maybe like a second serve um, uh, spin ball instead of like the, the fast first serve where they just have to block it and put it on the, in the corner. Uh, whereas Yui did that a lot today. Like even though I was hitting first serve, she hit it in all of the corners, so I, I couldn't reach it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with how I still managed to believe in myself and keep going, even though I was, I was, uh, um, sometimes getting those return winners. Uh, yeah, and she was matching you for pound, pound for pound with winners, wasn't she? She wasn't really letting you have anything. So even though it was a short one, I think probably the shortest you and you have ever played here. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, but it was, she still made it tough on you, didn't she? Yeah, all of the games were tight. Uh, there were a few games, maybe 40-15, uh, but the rest of the games, were all, all of them were tight. Uh, <coughs> so I think that shows that um, uh, Yui is always some th someone that you have to be so aware of. She can, she can change the game like that. So, Michael. When you've won this many in a row and this many championships in a row, where does the motivation to keep training and working hard come from? Is it is it a fear of failure? Is it just to keep up your standards? Like, where do you find motivation when you've been dominant for this long? It's it's in those improvement points. I like to be challenged. Um, the past two or three months, I've been training with the guys at home, um, the same guys that play here in the in the men's division. So. It shows that I'm, uh, I'm capable of like a higher level, and um, I, I I really enjoy that. Like even though I can't always beat them, <laughs> uh, sometimes I do, but that's very rare. Uh, but I'm challenged. Like they 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 challenge me to push harder, to hit harder, to have higher percentages, and that's what I really like at the moment. Um, but also just looking at a match like this, where can I still improve? And that's what I really enjoy. Um, these days, it's not just tennis player anymore. I'm also doing a lot of things besides tennis. I try to uh, do stuff for the Esfagir Foundation where we motivate kids to start play sports, any sports. They can, uh, they, it doesn't necessarily have to be tennis. Um, so uh, yeah, there's so many things next to tennis which I'm also doing at the moment, so um, I'm really enjoying it still. So. Okay, good, Gemma. Uh, go on then, embarrass them. Who's ha who have you had your best win against? Tom, <laughs> uh, Sheffers, or Ruben? <laughs> Tom, Sheffers, and Ruben. Really? All of them have gone down to you, Dida? All that, uh, well, I mean, yeah, we, we play like short tie breaks and stuff. I, sometimes I get the win. Um, so yeah, it makes me very happy. But uh, they always, they, they tell me to not tell anyone, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> You can tell everyone. You can tell us in here. No, 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 no. Of course, I think um, if if I would play a match, I, I don't think I'd win. But I mean, the fact that I can give them a good op uh, uh, opponent um, makes me happy. Okay, Brian. I guess you have to defend five majors next year, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the gold medal too. Uh, how, when do you start thinking about 2024, and you know how exciting that can all be? Um, so usually, because this question is asked a lot, like already at the start of the year, but then I always say like, there's so many Grand Slams still to play and get, uh, until the, the Paralympics. So it's really like I plan, now I'm, I'm gonna have a holiday, so I'm excited for that. But I'll uh, like literally the only goal I'll have in my mind is Australia. Uh, so I'm not thinking ahead that much yet. Um, and I think really taking it step by step is is what's keeping me going. And uh, don't think about the the hard stuff yet. Just uh, focus on one thing at a time. 